welcome back to my channel and you can see I have a new camera <laughs> I actually sound and look okay <laughs> so yeah I have a new camera and we are gonna do some videos now finally and this little one is gonna be in the video this little one's gonna be in the video hello hello <laughs> She's got, just got up so she might actually want feeding while I'm doing this video but that is a good thing because this video is about breastfeeding and basically all I'm going to do in this video is tell you the God's honest truth about breastfeeding because I think a lot of people sugarcoat breastfeeding or demonize breastfeeding and there's never really a happy middle when it comes to breastfeeding I think when people tell you their stories they either tell you it's fabulous or they tell you it's awful, I hated it. So I'm going to tell you our story so far. She is only eight weeks, so obviously we are still, um, we're still like in the beginnings as it were, but we are settled into our, not a routine, but we are settled into breastfeeding, aren't we? So yeah, um, not really any structure to the video. I'm just going to sort of go from my story and then some, maybe some advice. But I have breastfed Matilda from day one and she's never had, she has had a bottle of express milk and she's never had any formula. Um, day one, she latched on fine in the hospital. Um, it wasn't until the night of the first day that she was cluster feeding like crazy. Um, like crazy, like every five minutes she wouldn't, I couldn't put her down. And obviously after having a cesarean section, I was tired, I was sore, so I wasn't paying a lot of attention to the latch that she was doing. So come sort of the third day when I'd been at home already, um, well the second sort of day, night, um, I was in agony. Um, I had bruising to my nipples, I had not bleeding, but they were, they were, they were almost bleeding, it, 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 nearly. Um, chaps, oh it was horrible and I was sat on bed in my bed just crying saying I can't do this because obviously the pain was so bad but the problem wasn't her latch because once I'd realised what like once I sort of got like I had some sleep <laughs> once I'd had a little bit of sleep and I wasn't in hospital anymore and I wasn't as uncomfortable the latch was fine it wasn't her latch that was causing the problem it was the damage that had already been done by the bad latch the previous night and the previous couple of nights. So say by sort of day five after I had my local peer supporter come out to me, um, which is called Bambi's, um, shout out to them. <laughs> They're really, really great, really, really grateful for their help. Um, her latch was fine. They did say she had a very minor tongue tie, which I'll, I will get into sort of later in the story. Um, but yeah, um, the latch was fine, it wasn't the latch, as I said, it was just the fact that the damage had already been done and obviously her latching on, even the correct latch, was tender and sore. But I would say by week two, the, the soreness had all gone away, the bruising had gone away, um, and it was fine, as I said, it was still a little bit tender because obviously, as, as you know, you're not used to having a small person Sorry for the TMI, suck on your nipples all the time. Because that's what people don't understand. Like they think, oh, it's this natural, beautiful thing, which it is, but your body is not used to that happening, you know? Like it's not used to it. Like constantly being tugged and pulled at as well. So yeah, by week three, everything was perfect, not a single problem. And then week four, we got thrush. She got thrush in her mouth and I got thrush on my nipples, which is obviously from her mouth, um, which in turn made it very painful to breastfeed, but a different kind of pain to the pain I'd already felt, so I knew it wasn't a latch problem. So I went to the doctors, we have had cream, we're still doing that now, and she's eight weeks and it still comes and goes. I think thrush is one of those things though where it's just, you've got it and you've just really got to work at getting rid of it because obviously if I get rid of it and she's still got it she passes it back to me and vice versa so yeah <laughs> but other than that breastfeeding is going amazingly it's I don't want to use the word easy because you just never use the word easy when it comes to breastfeeding because it can just flip like that <laughs> we have had a couple of days where she's been a bit like a like she's sort of they call it nursing aversion aversion 
divert no aversion <laughs> where she's uh, oh god malaria where she um like she gets really fussy and stuff like that when she's trying to feed and um, we do have moments like that but i think that just comes with the territory i think i think some babies even if they're bottle fed they can go off their bottles and that's obviously very worrying same as it is if the baby won't nurse so apart from that it's great <laughs> Um, I haven't got any magical tips for anyone looking to breastfeed or anyone who's currently breastfeeding who's going through the really tough stages at the beginning. Just persevere. All I can say is just persevere. It does get easier. As long as you get the right help and you have the right cream, <laughs> it does get easier. And obviously support from your friends and family is really vital. Because I think some people can see their friend or their family member or their partner in pain and can just be like just get the bottle just get the bottle i know stanley did it and i know he didn't do it in a mean way he wasn't he's not like against me breastfeeding obviously he just obviously wanted me to stop crying <laughs> and he wanted her to stop crying and he just wanted a simple easy life but i'm so glad i persevered and i just wish that i had this courage this support and everything when i had dylan and we could have had a breastfeeding journey but unfortunately that wasn't the case for him but this time I've stuck to my guns, I have got the support that I needed and hopefully we're going to have a nice long easy <laughs> breastfeeding journey but as I said only tips I can give to mums who want to breastfeed is to stock up on cream because you will need it, it will be painful, it may not be as painful as it was for me if you get your latch right from the very beginning but it still will be uncomfortable and obviously you get dry and stuff because obviously you put, if you get wet and then dry, wet and then dry, you're gonna get dry skin. Um, I would recommend either coconut oil or Lansino nipple cream. The only problem with the Lansino nipple cream I found was it's quite hard. So I wouldn't put it anywhere near a fridge or I wouldn't put it anywhere where it's really cold. I would keep it like in like a drawer or something you know, to keep it warm because if it's cold, it goes quite jelly, like really hard. And if you're trying to spread it on a sore area like your nipple it tugs and pulls so you know it's up to you and coconut oil obviously is you know great for everything <laughs> great for everything slap it on everything <laughs> cook with it clean with it put it on your kids skin <laughs> you can even brush your teeth with it but well that's another story that that's another video in itself but as for her tongue tie she doesn't have a tongue tie I was given lots of different information regarding her tongue tie. <clears throat> I was told by one person she had a tongue tie, that was the first person I spoke to which is a Bambi. Um, and then a second person was her midwife, the first midwife we've seen. She said no, she doesn't have a tongue tie. And then the third person, which is another midwife, said she has a slight tongue tie. So we did have an appointment for her to go and have it snipped, but luckily enough she didn't need it snipping. That appointment was at Old Hay. Um, but luckily she didn't need it snipping, which kind of makes me happy because even though it's needed, it's painful obviously for them. And obviously they don't remember, but they remember at the time and it's not nice to see your baby in pain. So luckily she didn't have to have it done. Um, so that kind of made me a bit happy, a bit, kind of made me a bit puzzled as to why people thought she might have had one so I'm just keeping an eye on it but as for feeding it should it's not affected our feeding so and um, I'm trying to think of anything else I don't think there's anything else really I would just say another thing about supply a lot of women are worried in the beginning that they're not feeding their babies enough like their baby uh, their baby's feeding too much or they're obviously not getting enough that's not the case at all your baby is regulating your supply it's basically your baby is telling your body how much they need so if your body isn't making enough your baby will keep feeding and keep feeding until your body makes enough your baby will not starve i think i'm not sure the that of the national statistic facts but it's like one percent of women can't breastfeed either due to like you know illness not making milk. I'm not sure if that's the case, but I know 1% is the is the fact. I don't know if that's not producing milk or if it includes other people with illness as well. But yeah, your body knows what it's doing. It will do what it's supposed to do. <laughs> as long as you just keep feeding that baby, it will make the milk for you. Um, just don't worry. In the first like couple of weeks, they will feed like crazy. Like you will literally feel like you are stuck to your couch with a baby stuck to your nipple. That's how you will feel. 
you'll feel when you go out that you get into one shop and then you've got to sit down and feed. You go into another shop and then you've got to sit down and feed. I've been there and trust me, it is hard, but just try and enjoy it. Just try and enjoy the moments where you can, just, just you and your baby. Obviously there's a crazy world around you, but just obviously focus on you and your baby. And just think that these moments aren't gonna last forever. <laughs> they're not gonna wanna feed off you forever and they're not gonna wanna feed constantly forever. They will get older, they will be interested in toys and food yeah. eventually when you're weaning and they will lose interest. What they? Should we turn your mouth? They will lose interest. And those days will be very sad days when that happens. Won't they? So yeah, <laughs> all I can say is just enjoy it. Try and relax. Don't worry too much, you know, about how much they're getting. Babies aren't stupid. They know what they need. Don't they? They know how much they need, when they need it. Um, as for things like dummies and bottles, We've never had a problem. She's had a dummy since she was about three weeks old. Like we tried it very early on and she wasn't interested. And um, from about three to four weeks, she really liked the dummy because she would try and feed off me, but then she would be upset because there was milk coming out. And obviously she didn't want the milk. She just wanted the comfort of, who's that? She just wanted the comfort obviously of, of suckling babies. You know, it's a natural reflex for them to want to suckle to, you know, relax them. So don't worry about giving a dummy. If you want to give your baby a dummy, give your baby a dummy. <laughs> I think it's Sophie, I think her name is, from Mumology or something like that. Did a video recently about dummies and the dummy police. Ignore those people. You want to give your baby one, you give your baby one. Whether they're breastfed, bottle fed, it doesn't matter. All I would say is wait till your baby is comfortable at the breast. So wait till there's no problems at the breast, so no latch problems. Um anything like that just make sure there's no latching problems make sure you've got no sore nipples because you could feel you could you could be more inclined to give the dummy because you don't want to feed not because you don't want to feed but because you're sore if that makes sense so just wait for all your problems to die down not problems just teething problems i like to call them teething problems to die down in the beginning because obviously you will have some and if you don't that's fabulous that's great <laughs> you know, i applaud you but it is sometimes it will happen you know, oh, go blur again. <laughs> Nine times out of ten, you will probably have some problems, but they are so short lived as long as you sort them and nip them in the bud straight away. So, yeah, that is all I have to say on breastfeeding. Um, apart from in public, if you don't know, it is your legal right to breastfeed in public wherever you want. So if you are worried about it and anyone ever comes up to you and tells you you can't feed your baby where you're sitting, you tell them that they are breaking the law and that you can breastfeed wherever you want. Okay? <laughs> so yeah, that's it for our breastfeeding video. If you have any questions, then do ask me in the comments down below. I will try and answer them. As I said, we're only eight weeks in, so we're not like super experts on breastfeeding, but... I'm just telling you from my point of view and from what I've experienced, yeah. <laughs> so I'll see you guys soon. Bye.